Cox Communications is proud to present the Colt World Series on CXTV Channel 13. It's Game 4, Blue Springs, Missouri versus Hoosier North. Welcome to Loeb Stadium in Lafayette, Indiana, site of the 1997 Colt World Series on Cox Communication Sports. Hello again everyone, I'm Tony Ross and welcome to the 28th anniversary of the Colt World Series here on Cox Communications. Again joined by my sidekick, the athletic director and the head coach of McCutcheon High School Baseball, Jake Burton. Coach, we got a fantastic game here tonight. It is the Hoosier North All-Stars against the Blue Springs Missouri team. Both teams are kind of similar but this Blue Str uh, Springs team is very tough. Blue Springs comes in with a 55-11 and 11 record, Tony, and has been 11-1 and 1 in tournament ball to get here. Uh, they've played all year long together. Uh, that gives them a little bit of advantage over Hoosier North because, of course, Hoosier North's made up of four high schools, but they don't play together until the last part of July, so they've only played seven games as compared to 66 games. Now, they are also keyed offensively by a young, talented catcher by the name of Brad Tanner. Tanner's hitting four... 85. He's got 78 RBIs for the team, so he's, he's really providing a lot of spark for them in the, in the offense. And, and they say he's a pretty decent catcher, too, so we'll, we'll look and see what he's got to, to prove here tonight. Hoosier North team, they're coming in with a lot of confidence as well. They were undefeated in their last seven, and they were undefeated in tournament play. Hoosier North comes in. They, they were 3-0 in the preliminary tournament. They played a Lafayette team, beat them twice. They played a Niles, Michigan team, beat them twice. So Hoosier North put things together, too, and they've got six players on the starting lineup that's played the high school varsity sport or started for the high school varsity team this spring. So that will be a beneficial for them tonight. Their mainstay, though, is their pitching, and wow, what a pitching staff Coach Walbaum's got. Well, Neil Muster's their number one pitcher, you know, and if you got a kid like Neil out there, he's a lefty, he's a big kid, he throws the ball hard, uh, threw 86 innings this, uh, or 67 innings this year and struck out 86 guys, so he's a, he's a legitimate number one pitcher for anybody in this league. Now, what does that do to the offense? Well, obviously, when, when Neil's pitching, they're probably going to relax a little bit and think they only need one or two runs, and so Danny will probably play for one or two runs when Neil's pitching, whereas they might have someone else throwing that not quite as good as Neil, they might have to play for the big inning. Well, we got a dandy of a ball game coming up. It's Hoosier North against the Blue Springs, Missouri squad, and it's next as our coverage of the 1997 Colt World Series continues in just a moment. sale prices on top of their everyday low prices. The produce is always fresh. Getting a battery charger for uh, motorcycles. Just bought a toaster for my daughter. Tennis shoes. Hammers, nails. You can find just about anything in here. I love your sales. I can't beat it. Buy a low prices, low prices, on top of low prices, every day. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like Cox Cable Service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice, and Cox Communications offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or a $20 credit, guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free, guaranteed. Cox Communications, quality you can count on. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like Cox Cable Service. And welcome to Loeb Stadium, everyone, along with Jake Burton, Tony Ross, as we get set for tonight's action, the Blue Spring Astros and, of course, the Hoosier North All-Stars as we take a look at tonight's starting lineup. First of all, for the visiting Blue Springs Astros, leading off will be their pitcher, Tony Germano. Batting second, playing second will be Brian Borgstadt. Batting third will be their third baseman, Brian Thompson. Batting fourth will be the catcher, Brad Tanner. As we mentioned earlier in the pregame, Tanner, a 485 hitter. Watch him. He's got a good stick. Justin White bats fifth, he's in left. Joe Pickett will be in center field. James Lighthill is in right. John Mason will be the shortstop batting eighth and batting ninth will be the first baseman, Jason Middleton. Defensively for the Hoosier North All-Stars, it'll be Keith Waller in left, Matt Henzel in center, J.J. Thompson in right. Rounding the infield, third to first will be Patrick Lowry, followed by Jason Trida at short. David Gazvada will be at second, and Chris Berry will be at first. The battery will feature the talented catcher Nick McIntyre and on the hill Neil Musser. This guy is a he's gonna be a very viable commodity to say the least. He's got a 206 ERA with eleven wins, two losses, and he has struck out eighty-seven and sixty-seven innings. So that is a look at the Hoosier North All-Stars defense. The Hoosier North All-Stars lineup looks like this. It'll be Matt Henzel, the center fielder leading off. 
Batting second will be Dave Gazbada, the second baseman. Chris Berry will be at first. He is batting third. Batting fourth will be Nick McIntyre, the catcher. J.J. Thompson will be in right. Keith Waller will be the left fielder batting sixth. Batting seventh will be Patrick Lowry. Batting eighth, Neil Musser. And batting ninth will be the shortstop, Jason Trida. Defensively for Blue Springs, as they are on the field right now, Justin White is in left. It's Joe Pickett in center, James Lighthill in right, Brian Thompson, John Mason, Brian Borgstadt, and Jason Middleton round up the infield, third to first. The battery is Brad Tanner behind a plate on the mound, Tony Germano. He is 12-3 and three with a 3.11 ERA. This kid is a very good pitcher with a decent fastball coach. Yeah, we've looked at that, uh, Tony, and we've, we see that he struck out. 59 kids in those innings, 86 innings, but he's also given up 91 walks, so if Hoosier North can just be patient with the plate, they might serve to their advantage. Indeed, in 83 innings, he has allowed 62 runs, 37 of them earned. He's allowed 84 hits. And again, as the coach mentioned, you throw in the 91 walks and 59 strikeouts, the IRA averages at 311. Matt Henzel leads it off, and the first pitch to him is ball one. Henzel hitting 238 with no home runs and four RBIs. Coming into tonight's action, the second pitch is in and over for a strike. Henzel bats from the left side of the batter's box. Germano delivers. And that one hits the outside corner in the count now, a ball and two strikes. The one, two. Off the hands and fouled off to the left side. Lookout truck. Once again, near our Cox Cable TV truck over there. Everybody was scattering. Saw Jason Hahn trying to make a, a, a very feeble attempt at the ball. So the count remains a ball and two strikes to Matt Hedzel. The 238 hitter stands in and awaits the pitch from Germano. Here it comes. Swing and a miss in the dirt. The ball gets by the catcher, Tanner. He's going to have to throw quickly to first in time for out number one. Got a good arm there, Tony. The catcher came up with the ball. He blocked it somewhat. When he got, when he got the ball, came up with a nice hard throw. I'm sure he's going to be able to throw the ball well to second base. That'll bring up David Gasvoda, the Hoosier North second baseman, coming in hitting 364 with no home runs and two RBIs. Germano's first pitch to him. Good fastball right in across for a strike. The 0 1. Good let up, but that's rocked deep to left. This looks like a gapper. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. On his way to second is Gazvoda, and he'll pull up there with a stand up double. So a solid hit by the Hoosier North second baseman. Looks like he got the ball and the ball was kept up in the zone. David went after it, you know, and hit the ball well. He's good high ball pit, good high ball hitter, and, and uh, Tony left one up for him and let it hang for him. That'll bring up the 295 hitting Chris Berry. 15 RBI. Also to his credit. He too stands in from the left side of the batter's box. He faces Germano who had tied the first hitter he faced, but has given up a double. And the first pitch is in and over to Barry for a strike. And talking to Tony uh, Germano before the game, Tony, that he told us that he's got three pitches, fastball, change, and curve, and he'll use them all at any time during the count. So if he's got control of those three pitches, he'll be good, good for them tonight. We got an 0-1 pitch coming up. Swing and a miss. Change. No balls, two strikes. Now the count to Chris Berry. Chris was well ahead of that. That's a change there to the second pitch. There's two strikes on him now. He's got to really protect himself here. The 0-2 in the dirt. Great save by the catcher, Brad Tanner. So now it's a ball and two strikes. And he's used all three pitches Sure to, has. to Chris. So Chris Berry has seen it all. We got a 1-2 pitch coming up. Rolling to first, Middleton will make the play. Whoop, he's going to have to get it over with some help from Germano, and they'll get the 3-1 force at first. Taking third base on the play is Gazvoda. Good heads up, base running there by Gazvoda. 
So now they're a two away. And that'll bring up the number four hitter, Nick McIntyre. He'll be doing the receiving tonight. Germano looks in at Tanner. And we're ready for his first pitch. Curveball that didn't break. Stayed high for ball one. Nick's really up in the box here, Tony. Look at him. He's almost got his front foot in the front line. Back foot's right even with the plate. The 1-0 pitch. Quick hands and a hard shot to second. But eight up by Borgstadt. Throws over to first in time. Hoosier North fails to score in their half of the first inning. They do pick up a hit, but they strand a runner 90 feet away. We have completed a half inning of baseball here. And it's no score with Blue Springs coming up to bat. It's the 1997 Colt World Series on Cox Communications. At Cox, we know your time is valuable, so we introduced our on-time guarantee. Either we're on time, or your cable installation's on us. And if we're late on a service call, you get $20. Uh-oh. You're on time! Yes, ma'am. The on-time guarantee from Cox. If I'd been late, ma'am, we'd have owed you $20. You don't say. Cox, quality service you can count on. Picture a world where the music perfectly fits the way you feel with the flawless sound of a great CD and no commercial ever. You can live in that world now. It's called your home. You can create that music. It's called Music Choice, the definitive music service. Over 30 different channels direct to your stereo. So changing your mood is as easy as changing channels. Music Choice, the next great sound wave. Keep trucking, got my chips cashed in. Keep trucking. Welcome back to Loeb Stadium, everyone. There you see the numbers. No runs, one hit for Hoosier North. Blue Springs has yet to come to the plate. Defensively for Hoosier North, you got Keith Waller in left, Matt Henzo in center, J.J. Thompson in right, Patrick Lowry, Jason Trita, and David Gasvoda at second, and Chris Berry's at first. The battery is Nick McIntyre, and there you see the big left-hander on your screen, Neil Musser. 2.06 ERA, 11-2 record, 87 strikeouts in his last 67 innings pitch. This kid can throw. He's a really a good high school pitcher this spring. As a sophomore, he was excellent last year as a freshman. He's just getting stronger as his age increases, but he's really getting up there, and he's throwing the ball really well all summer long. Look for good things from him tonight for Hoosier North. That'll be the pitcher, Tony Germano, followed by the second baseman, Brian Borkstad, and then the third baseman, Brian Thompson. Those will be the first three hitters that Musser faces. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Tony Germano stands in, a 342 hitter, no home runs and 26 RBIs as Musser's ready to deliver. And he's going to bunt it right back to Musser. Oh, he drops the ball, and the throw is not in time. So they'll probably score that in air on Musser. And that'll leave it up to Brian Borgstad. We kind of talked about it beforehand, Coach, that we weren't surprised that this Blue Springs team wasn't going to come out button off uh, Musser, considering that he is a hard thrower. Well, I think, you know, they, they probably have a little bit of scouting report and understand what he can and can't do. And this kid, Germano, may be a kid, that, you know, we don't know that for sure, but he may be a kid that's dragged a bunch two out of three times a game, too. So. But it looks like they're going to try to move him on and play for one run here. Brian Borgstadt, the hitter, the second baseman, a 445 swinger with two home runs and 63 runs batted in in 66 games. He bunted through the first time for strike one. Let's see what he does here. He'll square away, and the curveball bunted right back to Musser. His only play will be the first, and the throw's in time. So the sacrifice is good, and the Astros have a runner on second. So with one down, that'll bring up the number three hitter, Brian Thompson. Brian Thompson comes in hitting 397 with 10 home runs and 46 runs batted in. He stands in from the right side of the plate. Musser's first offering. That's a little high and away for ball one. Outfield straight away for Thompson. Germano leads off second. The pitch by Musser down low. Skipped off the left shin guard of catcher Nick McIntyre. 
He's new at that position, Coach. Yeah, Nick's uh, hasn't caught any high school baseball. He started catching this summer a little bit. He's a really good athlete, and they've made him into a catcher here, and I think he'll do well for him there. He's a gamer. He's played a lot of baseball. He's been around a lot of baseball, and, he, and he's a good athlete, really quick back there. So look for him to be able to do a good job for Hoosier North behind the plate. All right, Buster's delivery, a fastball right across first strike. A fake snap throw to second by McIntyre, picked off by Muster, the pitcher. So the count, two balls and one strike to Brian Thompson. One out, Germano stands at second. Now you see the number 16 in the back of his jersey, and now Musser on the hill delivers. Look out, that's fouled off to the right side, out of play. That's a good pitch, it jammed the hitter. Count evens at a couple of balls and strikes. A tremendous turnout for this second game. Brian Thompson stands in, Musser with a look. The pitch. That let up stayed high. Didn't pull it down. You know, I think he's trying to throw a breaking pitch there. He just didn't get on top of it and pull it down. And I want to talk to you about the, the techniques of throwing the curveball, especially on the follow through. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Jammed him again, and the fastball sliced fouled on the right side out of play. The curveball and the follow through, I was always taught that on your follow through with a curve coach, you're supposed to snap down like you're pulling a lampshade. Pulling the shade down or pulling the window shade down or or getting over you, a barrel, there's a barrel out in front of you, you want to get over the top and pull it straight down. You know, and Finishing a, a curveball is the most important part of the curveball because you get the spin and get the proper rotation on the ball by finishing it off right well. Here we go, we got a payoff pitch here to Thompson. And oh, that one just missed for ball four. Just missed. Thompson, as you saw, jogging to the first base, kind of shook his head saying, wow, I think I might have caught a break there. Well, the Astros now have something going. They got runners on first and second. And one out. Tanner's up, Tony. He's the kid that's hitting 485, leading their team in hitting. So he's the right guy for Blue Springs to have up in this situation. Tack on seven home runs and seven, eight RBIs to boot. And the first pitch to him is knee high for a strike. There you see Tanner. He's not exceptionally built, but I'll tell you what, he makes contact. The let up by the left-hander, Musser, misses. One and one. He's been high on all of his curveballs. He's just not getting it on top of the pitch and bringing it down in the strike zone. Musser with a look at both runners. On first and second, the fastball ripped high to right. This one slicing foul, and it is going to be there. At least about three feet foul. That was close. Well, you know when a pitcher's not throwing in his second pitch for a strike and they're sitting back waiting for the fastball, I don't care how fast you can throw the ball, kids get used to that and they get timing down and they can hit the fastball. You've got to be able to mix it in there. And Neil right now is having a little trouble getting his off-speed pitches in for strike. Are you surprised he's not really using that fastball of his a lot more? Well, you know, I think he's trying to use his fastball because, I mean, he's trying to use his off-speed stuff, but he has to use his fastball just because of the fact that, you know, he's throwing that for a strike and, and throwing it pretty well. The one-two. Jammed him, a flare toward the shortstop, tried it, and he'll make the catch for out number two. That's a big out. A real big out recorded there by the Hoosier North left-hander. That'll leave it up to Justin White. Justin White, a 353 hitter with a couple of home runs and 38 RBIs in the 66 games that they've played, that they've kept stats on. Here's the pitch to him, a fastball inside, gets away from the catch, and the Rams are going to go. McIntyre's got a shot at second, and no, oh, the second baseman, Gasbada, could not hold on, and that's going to allow the runner from third to score. So Germano comes home, and an unearned run puts Blue Springs, Missouri, ahead by a 1-0 score. You know, the official score gave that error to Mack and our catcher, but the throw was right on the bag there, and it looked like he's in his glove. The kid kicked it out, and most times we'd have to give that error to the second baseman. Well, Justin White records an RBI without swinging the bat. He has a one ball and no strike count to him. With two out, the pitch. That breaking ball comes across. So the count evens at one. Musser delivers. Blew the fastball right by him. And a snap throw to second. Close. Very close. But Thompson just got back. 
That's the thing that Nick's able to do back there behind the play. He's so quick, gets rid of the ball so quick. And he'll throw behind a lot of runners in this game. One ball, two strikes, two out, the pitch. Fast ball jammed him and he fouled it back. So Justin White stays alive with a one-two count. White did well just to get a piece of that one, it looked like. Well, he's up on the bat a couple inches here, and he better be because if Neil throws that fast, well, he's got to be ready to, to put it in play. One, two, well outside. So now the count evens at two balls and two strikes. What do you throw here? Well, you know, if he's 2-2, he's, two, two, he's got a base open. So I think he can go with some off-speed pitch here. You know, the kid's probably thinking he's going to throw him a fastball again. That's what he's been throwing, trying to get by him. Here it comes, the 2-2 offering, well outside with a curveball, and now it's 3-2. and two. As you mentioned, Coach, looks like Muss is just having a lot of trouble with that curveball. I think he's throwing one curveball for a strike this inning, and I, I guess if I'm number 12, if I'm, if I'm the hitter here, I'm going to be looking for a fastball on this pitch. And for a bread-and-butter pitch as his curveball not coming across, that's not a very good sign. Here's the payoff pitch to Justin White. Swings at a high fastball, and Musser gets himself out of a jam. However, Blue Springs puts up a run on no hits a couple of errors were the reason why and we are through one inning of baseball blue springs one hoosier north nothing this is the colt world series on cox communications we're just talking to some people today trying to get their reaction to this meyer score every day every day meyer does it like no one else the store itself is terrific how are they filming me right now there's a great selection of everything. Where do you think you're going? No, 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 no. you got to talk to me. There's a lot of things you can get here you can't get anywhere else. We're just trying to get me alone. Anytime you save money, I enjoy that. Isn't that what you want me to say? Can't help myself. Maya doesn't like nobody else. So, this is satellite TV. The future, yep. How much was it again? About eight fifty. Eight hundred and fifty dollars installed. Eight hundred and fifty dollars. Plus the monthly uh, uh, programming fee. Oh, just like cable. This is a hundred and fifty channels. So where's our news? Can't get local news. Uh, no local stations. No local news. No local weather. These days, when everyone's promising you the future of television, sports. Isn't it nice to know you already have it? Well, there you see the numbers. One run, no hits for Blue Springs, Missouri. No runs, one hit, and a couple of errors for Hoosier North. Along with our statistician, Sean Walkup, and of course, the coach. Jake Burton, Tony Ross, great to be with you. A beautiful evening, an excellent crowd on hand to witness this matchup here against Blue Springs and Hoosier North. It'll be... J.J. Thompson, followed by Keith Waller and Patrick Lowry. In the first pitch, the Thompson swung through and missed. Thompson comes in, a 298 hitter with no home runs and 12 RBIs. He's a line drive hitter, Tony. I know he's worked hard at hitting line drives. That's what he does most of the time. And this, he bounces the first. On the big hop, it's taken by the first baseman, Jason Middleton, rather easily. So that'll go three unassisted in the books for one out. That'll bring up the sixth hitter, left fielder, Keith Waller. Keith Waller will stand in on the right side of the batter's box. Outfield kind of pulling a shift. The left fielder, Justin White, is really shaded toward the line. There's a big gap in left center field. Here's a fastball low and in for ball one. There you see Waller. Here's the 1-0. This one's bounced the third on the big hop. Thompson, strong throw across, out number two. So Waller retired, and that brings up Patrick Lowry. Lowry. Also a McCutcheon. Patrick played a lot of JV ball this year. Or, I mean, a lot of varsity ball, or JV ball as a, as a, as a freshman. Last This year as a sophomore, was hurt for most of the year. So he played varsity ball, but didn't get in a lot. Didn't get a lot of plate appearances. First pitch to him hits him square in the back, and he had nowhere to go on that. Well, that's a hit. <laughs> and in this situation, you want to get on base any way you can, get something going here. Musher, Musher's a kid that's going to be coming up here. He can really pop the ball. He can take it out. Well, Musser indeed stands in. Musser from Benton Central. He's a junior. 
he hit in their number four spot this year. He, I know he had a home run in the semi-state level tournament here at Loeb, so I, I saw him hit it over the MVP sign then. So if he quick gets a good pitcher, first. he might be able to take it. Sorry about that, Coach. A quick throw to first and the runner back in time. He looks like he's got a quick bat. Another throw to first. And that's just in talking with the coach, Dan Walbum. He might be one of the best number eight hitters in this tournament because he usually bats up in the order. And maybe even just because he's pitching here that he's batting down the order, but he's a solid middle hitter. Here's the first pitch to Musser, and that's a check swing for a strike. Two out. Thompson and Waller both retired. Since then, Larry was hit by a pitch. He stands at first. And the delivery by Germano just inside, and that almost grazed his counterpart, Musser. <laughs> Musser taking a couple of practice swings. Wallbaum flashing the signs over in the third base coaching box. Here's the 1-1. One, one. one around, one and two. They always say the fast, high fastball is always the highest pitch to lay off, coach. That's right, and he didn't call that. I mean, he wanted to get that pitch. The umpire didn't call that a strike. He, he checked on it, and third base on Bob Wolf says it wasn't a strike. So it's still two and one. Well, now the home plate umpire is chatting with the press box, and I guess it's just going to remain two balls and one strike, so that check swing was a ball. The 2-1, the Musser, well ahead on the swing with that fastball. Now the count evens at two balls, two strikes. You know, Bill Burgess is a plate umpire, and he first checked with first base ump. With the left-hand batter, you got to check with the third base ump because he can see whether he went around or not. Then he went to the third base ump, and, and Wolf said he what, didn't go around. Count even, 2-2 two and two to Musser with two out. Curve ball, that went a little outside. So now the count full, three balls and two strikes. They're going to be running, that's a good thing, because Patrick Lowry doesn't have a lot of foot speed, so it would be nice for him to get a, a start on, on, on the pitch. Can Musser help his own cause here? Down a run, the pitch swing, and a miss, and he's down on strikes. So Tony Germano gets himself out of the potential jam. Hoosier North strands a runner on first, no hits. We have completed an inning and a half of baseball. There you see the score. Blue Springs one, Hoosier North nothing. It's the 1997 Colt World Series on Cox Communications. At Cox, we know your time is valuable, so we introduced our on-time guarantee. Either we're on time or your cable installation's on us. And if we're late on a service call, you get $20. Uh-oh. Yes, ma'am. The on-time guarantee from Cox. If I'd been late, ma'am, we'd have owed you $20. You don't say. Cox, quality service you can count on. Imagine a world where the music perfectly fits the way you feel with the flawless sound of a great CD, music of your choice, and no commercials, ever. You can live in that world now. It's called your home. You can create that music. It's called Music Choice, the definitive music service direct to your stereo. Let over 30 different channels of music wash all over you. Music Choice, the next great sound wave. Welcome back to Loeb Stadium, along with Jake Burton, Tony Ross, and Sean Walkup, our statistician for this evening. We appreciate all of his help. We get set for the bottom of the second. It's 1-0 Blue Springs. They will send up Joe Pickett, James Lighthill, and John Mason. Tonight is Walmart night here at Loeb Stadium as we celebrate in part with the Colt World Series. we got a lot of great things going on, sponsorships during all of this. It's just been a great festive atmosphere. Harry Bradway and his crew, a lot of credit goes to Harry, but he's got a great crew. He's organized a great group. They do a great job promoting the sport here. Joe Pickett starts it off. He looks at a fastball high from Musser. Pickett, a 375 hitter with three home runs and 61 RBIs on the season. The 1-0, late with a swing. That evens up the count and a ball and a strike. Late with another swing. The count, one ball and two strikes here. Boy, Muster's just throwing that fastball right by him. I'm not so sure if I wouldn't go with it again. It will be next year. Yep. The 1-2. Two. There's the heat. Two balls, two strikes now. Is that one missed outside? 
<laughs> there you see Joe Pickett. The 2-2. Two -two. Three fastballs that Pickett just cannot catch up to, and he's down on strikes. One out. He may not see anything but fastball all night. James Lighthill, the right fielder for Blue Springs, will now stand in. Lighthill's numbers, 401 average, two home runs, 53 runs batted in. So this guy can put the ball in play. He hits this to the right side of the infield. There's David Gesvoda, no problem. 4-3 in the scorebook, two out. John Mason will get his turn. He's a 167 hitter with no home runs and one RBI. This is his first appearance in the Colt World Series. We were talking about this Blue Springs team there. Got a little chink in their armor. They're missing a couple of players, at least one that normally starts. Look out. That one almost hit the bat boy. Yeah, they got three guys. They left uh, two of them left home to play football, and one took a vacation. So they're sure a few people tonight. <laughs> Whoops. The 0 1 fouled back to the screen, and now Musser ahead of the count. No balls, two strikes. Now you see the ball boy that almost got hit. Here we go with the well pitch. Good let up by Musser. Nowhere near the strike zone. They count one and two. And that's a good 0 2 pitch, though. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Mason. Look out. He just nailed somebody, one of his coaches. I think that might have been Thompson. Coach Thompson right in the back. He caromed off the wall and then ricocheted and nailed the coach. They're all having a good laugh over in the Astros bullpen, but I'll tell you right now, under his breath, Coach Thompson saying a few words that, quite frankly, the FCC just will not allow us. The whole dugout Tony's moving the other end, too. <laughs> the one-two pitch. Inside corner, strike three, and John Mason will grab some pop. Neil Muster comes on, retires. Blue Springs in order, one, two, three. We have completed two innings of baseball. There's your score, one nothing, Missouri. This is the Colt World Series on Cox Communication Sports. Hey, try that in the top. Who now? Jason. Ninja. You can't put an arrow right here so I know who's next. The who starts it off. Did you do that? Okay. That'll be cool. Thanks, buddy. That helps me understand it better. I just got to be that way. <coughs> yeah, this is Tom Timmons. Tommy Gunn? He was a number two pitcher for Jeff. He was a um, freshman. <coughs> Until when Dykes went down, he came to number one. He's going to be the number one for the next three years. Yeah, he's supposed to be good. Can't wait to see him pitch. Yeah, he's, got, he's got a cannon for him. He throws hard. Yeah, Shane Allen had a sore arm last night. And uh, Jake told the umpire, he goes, I don't know how long he's going to last. He's got a sore arm. Look what he did through the, the game. one nothing, Blue Springs, Missouri on top of Hoosier North as we get ready for the top of the third. Don't forget, you can follow Colt World Series baseball action on CXTV 13 Sports and our tape delay telecast. Tonight's game will be shown the following afternoon at 1.30 p.m. So catch exciting Colt World Series baseball on Cox Communications. Jason Trida leads it off, and he goes after the first pitch, and he's going to pop up to the Astros second baseman, Brian Borkstad, for out number one. So one pitch, one out. That'll definitely put a smile on Tony Germano's face. Makes him work less. To the top of the order we go now to Matt Henzel. Henzel was a strikeout victim of Germano, and he gets a hold of this one, lifting it very high into shallow right center, and Joe Pickett camps under to haul it in for out number two. Two pitches, two outs. There better not be three pitches, three outs, because as, as a coach or as a player here on the, when you're up to bat, you're not going, you don't want to let the pitcher get by with three pitches in the inning. You got to take this pitch here and make him work a little bit, because three pitch inning gives him like no innings. He hadn't pitched innings. Well, the question is, will Gasvoda do that? And that's who's at the plate. David Gasvoda looks at a strike. He doubled his last at bat, which is accounted for the only hit that Hoosier North mustered. There's a breaking ball low. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Outfield straight away for Gasvoda. 
Here's the pitch. Pulled the third on the little hop. Brian Thompson bobbles, but throws just in time to retire Gasvota. And the inning is over. One, two, three, nothing across for Hoosier North. We've completed two and a half here at Loeb Stadium. There's your score, Blue Springs one. Hoosier North, nothing on Cox Communications sports coverage of the Coke World Series. Basically, he's obsessed with Meyer. There's a Meyer clock, a Meyer cabinet, and Meyer spaghetti. Whenever I'm bored, I go to Meyer. I guess I'm bored a lot. Everything is from Meyer. Everything. He'll shop at two or three in the morning. It's a sickness. That's my Meyer flag on top of my Meyer flagpole. The neighbors find it a bit peculiar. You know what's peculiar? Meyer's without an S. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like Cox Cable Service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice. And Cox Communications offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or a $20 credit, guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free, guaranteed. Cox Communications, quality you can count on. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like Cox Cable Service. It'll be Middleton, followed by Germano and Borkstad as we get ready for the bottom of the third inning. There's the score, one nothing. Blue Springs on top. We do want to remind you here, due to technical difficulties, our character generator, which produces the names and lineups and other information you see on your screen, it, it has broke down. And we apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. We're trying to get it corrected as soon as possible. So again, we apologize for the inconvenience, but we're trying to keep you up to date with as much information as possible. Middleton stands in a 367 hitter, two home runs and 42 RBIs. He's down on the count 0-1 here. The second pitch to him is a good curveball. That one came across for a strike, Coach. That's an excellent pitch. He's mixing it now. If he keeps that up, they're going to be in the game. Now they just need to score a few runs. The 0-2, look out. That's a wild one all the way back to the screen. Might be a little too far out of the strike zone. If the kid swings at that, he's going to be on first base because Nick couldn't catch it. There you see the ball, boy. The one-two pitch, there's that's off the glove of McIntyre, and he's not going to have any play. I thought it was a foul tip at first, but McIntyre just flat out had that one go right through his catching glove. So reaching base there is Jason Middleton, and he struck out. Number 16, pitcher, Tony Germano. Well, so does that go as a pass ball then, Coach? Uh, I think it goes as a wild, wild pitch, pitch in that situation. This Germano is a kid that let off his game with a bunt. He might look to see he might bunt here again. If it scores 1-0, they need to get another run. He reached on an error, that's the bat. He went to bunt, and Muster about took his ankles out. That's a good pitch. When you see someone squaring away like that, you want to go inside and try to bust them in the hands. In this case, it was the shoe tops. Look for Germano to do the same thing again here. Tony Germano stands in the pitch, looks at the fastball, snap throw to first by McIntyre. It's not in time. 50, 50 tickets. One ball, one strike. The count to Germano. He squared away. The pitch is into the dirt. Good block by Nick McIntyre. He keeps Middleton at first. There you see Nick. Two balls, one strike the count. Germano, the hitter, has a throw to first good scoop by Chris Berry. Chris Berry's got a pretty good glove. He played first base, started varsity first base for West Lafayette all season, so he's played a lot of innings down at first base. 2-1. Right across the knees, down the middle. Evens up the count at a couple of balls and strikes. Middleton getting the look from his coach, takes his lead, and we're ready. Swing, and a miss by Germano. He's down on strikes. The snap throw to first, not in time. So there's one away as Germano strikes out. And there's one gone for Brian Borgstad. Borkstad sacrificed his last at bat. Yeah, I'm anxious to see him swing the bat. He's batting 445, I think, and mm -hmm. he had to bunt the last time. Let's see if he can, how he does swing the bat. 63 RBIs, that isn't too shabby. 
He looks at a muster breaking ball that misses for ball one. Neil's, Neil's still having a little trouble getting that curveball across for a strike. Here's the 1 0. Instead of throw to first. So, you know, starting off a hitter with, a, a, with something other than a fastball just to break the monotony is a good thing. Oh, it's excellent. I mean, you've got to be able to use all your pitches and, and at any time to count, and that's why he throws a curveball, first pitch or a fastball, first pitch. A kid can't sit there and guess hit. Well, as you saw, that fastball high and away runs the count to 2 0 now. But you don't want to be 2 0 in the count. This is the hitter's pitch here. He's looking for one that he can drive. Mm hmm. The 2 0 swung on and missed by Borgstadt. He just got a piece of it. I apologize. I thought he went through, but. So the foul tip runs to two balls and one strike. There's one out. Middleton reached on a drop third strike. Actually, on a wild pitch. That's ruled. He's standing at first. Germano is struck out, and the 2 1 coming up here shortly to Borkstad, but it'll have to be after that throw to first. Neil's doing a good job not letting the runner get an advantage of at first, keeping him close. The 2 1 pitch. Fastball high and away. Now he falls behind the count. Three balls and one strike. It's a good pitch to be run on. You know, they. Expect a fastball or for, for a strike here. The kid's going to be swinging for the strike. If it's not, the kid's going to be walking. So runner's moving on this pitch thinking he may hit the ball. Here's the 3-1. Swing and a miss. Now, when the, runner doesn't, when the runner doesn't run, maybe the runner's not very fast. <laughs> <laughs> so the count's full 3-2. and two. As we mentioned, or, uh, Borkstad can put the ball in play. And 200 at bats this season coming into this first game for them. 93 hits. There's a shot in the right field base hit. And the ball slides underneath the glove of J.J. Thompson and right. So the runners will advance 90 more feet. And the Astros will have runners on second and third. Just a lack of concentration there by the Hoosier North right fielder, J.J. Thompson, as he had that ball slide right underneath him. Well, that'll bring up Brian Thompson. He walked his last to bat, got no further than second base. Thompson stands in. Musser with the look. The first pitch swung on and missed. Blue Springs already leading by a score of 1-0. And they're threatening to tack on some more with one out. Looks like Dan's going to play his middle infield back here. Going to give up a run here to try to get an out. It's early in the game. That's not a bad move. The 0-1. Good breaking ball, but apparently too high. So the count one ball and one strike to Thompson. Musser steps off the rubber, looks his runners back. Borgstad at second. Middleton at third, and here's the pitch. pitch. Fouled away. That's a great breaking pitch. Started at strike zone, broke out of strike zone. You can tell because the stride of the hitter, Ryan Thompson, was well off. One ball, two strike pitch coming up to Thompson. Fouled back to the screen. So we'll do it again at one and two. Neil's put himself in a position here where now Brian doesn't know if he's going to throw a fastball or curveball because both pitches have been pretty effective in this at bat. Big advantage for a pitcher if you're able to throw those, both pitches for strikes. I want to get your comment on a, in a second here on how similar is an 0-2 count and a 1-2 count. We'll do it after this 1-2 pitch. Curveball wrapped to left, but right there is Waller. He'll make the catch. The runner tags from third to throw to second. Got they got him! The run does not score! Borgstad caught napping at second base. He went too far. And Blue Springs comes up empty-handed here in their half of the third. Wow, a horrible running mistake on the part of Brian Borgstad. Keeps this a 1-0 contest. Blue Springs still on top. This is the 1997 Colt World Series on Cox Communication Sports. At Cox, we know your time is valuable, so we introduced our on-time guarantee. Either we're on time, or your cable installation's on us. And if we're late on a service call, you get $20. Uh-oh. You're on time!
Yes, ma'am. The on-time guarantee from Cox. If I'd been late, ma'am, we'd have owed you twenty dollars. You don't say. Cox, quality service you can count on. The L and B feed horn weather cover. Jam. Hundred feet RG6 burial table. Couldn't you have hired someone to do this? Guy wanted 150 bucks. I'm saving us money. Whoops. Mm-hmm. Dish must face south. Jim. Make sure the line of sight is clear for best reception. These days, when everyone's promising you the future of television, Jim. isn't it nice to know you already have it? And welcome back to Loeb Stadium. There you see the score, Blue Springs 1 and Hoosier North nothing. In just a moment, probably in the bottom half of the fourth inning, we'll be talking with Terry Thompson. And uh, Coach, uh, we got Terry here with us, as a matter of fact, but we're going to get the mic to him here in just a few moments. In the meantime, it'll be Chris Berry leading it off, and the first pitch of the hand pops straight up in the air. And the ball is dropped by the pitcher, Ter Tony Germano. Germano had it, and he just flat out lost it in the end, it looked like. Tony, that's not a pitcher's ball to field. That's got to be a third baseman's call away, and catcher's number two choice, and that pitcher's last choice to get that field, field that ball. Well, Germano, I was always told as a pitcher, you're supposed to be the quarterback. You're supposed to be telling people where to feel it or who to exactly. feel it. Exactly. You point out who's going to get it, but you're not the one that's going to get it usually. Well, it's an 0-1 to Barry coming up, and he's going to get a looper foul down the left field line. There we got a microphone for Terry Thompson coming in. Jake, give us a little bit of background on Terry. Well, Terry's a 1977 coach of the uh, Lafayette World Series champions, and he played back in 1970. Went to Lafayette Jeff High School here locally, went on Purdue. Big hitter for Purdue. He's uh, leading the Big Ten hitting going in last week of the season. I don't know, your junior year, Terry, senior year? Yeah, it was my junior season. And uh, right up there with Paul Maltor and who else? Was there someone else was up there pretty yeah, they good? Said, they said Dave Winfield, but Winfield graduated in 73. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, Chris Berry strikes out for out number one for the Hoosier North All-Stars, and that brings up McIntyre. Nick, he grounded into a 4-3. Last at bat. Actually, it was a check swing strike for strike one to McIntyre. The second pitch is a curveball over 0 and 2 quickly. Nick's up in the front of the box here. I mean, you not expecting to throw a curveball to him when he's up that far. He's going to try, try to get it before it breaks, but it didn't work. On three pitches, Germano retires McIntyre. He's making it look easy. Two out now in the Hoosier North. Oh, I see that one of your uh, proteges. <laughs> is now coaching one of the Colt World Series League teams, Brian McDonald. Brian plays shortstop for us in 77, a very sound player, very good fundamental player. J.J. Thompson, the right fielder, stands in. The first pitch to him is in and over for a strike. Right now, it just looks like Germano's not really missing too much of a beat here, Jay. No, he's throwing really well. He threw only five pitches last innings. He's throwing only seven pitches this inning. Hoosier North needs to work him a little bit and start moving the ball a little bit better. The 0-1, breaking ball over for strike two. That's a beautiful curveball when you can backdoor it like that. We probably shouldn't let Terry do any commentating here while his son's hitting right now. <laughs> curveball into the dirt. Well, that might not be a good idea. He might be too critical of that. <laughs> well, I know the first time his back leg stayed straight up and he didn't go down on that uh, low inside fastball. Wasn't very pleased with that. It looks so, like a top spinning, didn't it? <laughs> JJ's got a one and two count, the pitch. Curveball beat the first. J Jason Middleton will get the unassisted put out. Terry, don't go away, my friend. We're going to come back with you in a moment. Who's your North goes down in order one, two, three again. We have completed three and a half innings of baseball, and Blue Springs holding on to an impressive one nothing lead. Back in a moment. You know, I've seen enough mean people in the NFL. That's why I like Meyer. Not an angry face in the bunch. Hey, I just feel comfortable there. The produce, seafood, and fresh deli are wonderful. Truth is, whether I decide on one of their hot meals or the chilled shrimp, I always end up getting a warm smile.
Imagine a world where the music perfectly fits the way you feel with the flawless sound of a great CD, music of your choice, and no commercials ever. You can live in that world now. It's called your home. You can create that music. It's called Music Choice, the definitive music service direct to your stereo. Let over 30 different channels of music wash all over you. Music Choice, the next great sound wave. There you see the numbers, one run on one hit and one error for Blue Springs, no runs, one hit, three errors for Hoosier North, and that's the situation right now here at Loeb Stadium, again, along with Jake Burton off to my far left, and Terry Thompson is with us, I'm Tony Ross, great to be with you, Terry, you know, year after year it seems that this Colt World Series just gets more exciting and exciting, the atmosphere just gets more hyped up, you find that to be the situation? Well, definitely. Uh, I think the reason behind that, though, is Harry Bradway's done an excellent job in the 27 years that it's been here in Lafayette, and uh, his committee does a very good job of promoting it in the public relations, and uh, baseball is very sound in Lafayette. Brad Tanner, Justin White, Joe Pickett do up for the Astros, and the first pitch is in and over for a strike. Brad Tanner, he flied out to the shortstop, or popped out to the shortstop in his first at bat. That fastball up and in, the count evens at a ball and a strike. Musser's delivery. That fastball in and over, and now the count one and two. That's what Musser's got to do. He's got to get ahead on every hitter. He's really throwing a lot of fastballs. That's been his predominant pitch here in the last three innings. One, two, swing and a miss. And I'll have to admit, folks, Tanner, who's a 485 hitter, has not looked too 485 in his first two appearances. He can't catch up with, uh, with his fastball yet. So Tanner strikes out. That brings up the left fielder, Justin White. Justin, in his first at bat, he was a strikeout victim of Musser. Musser has five strikeouts on the contest, and the first pitch misses for ball one. Musser delivers the 1-0 into the dirt. Terry, your assessment so far of this Hoosier North team right now? Well, I think they're a very good ball club. All the kids are playing scared right now. They're, you know, they got the butterflies through the first three, uh, first few innings, and uh, they're a very sound ball club, hitting and pitching. I don't think we've seen a better pitcher in the tournament so far, other than Neil Musser. Obviously, the young man uh, from Blue Springs is doing a good job with his pitches and location. But Hoosier North team's just going to have to wait it out and look for the fastball. The 3-0 pitch. In the meantime, the Justin White comes across for a strike, three and one is now the count. Musser really is a strong pitcher. No no, no question about that. Probably the strongest right now going into this tournament is now the count full three and two. I agree with you. He, this last weekend, he pitched on Saturday in the national tournament and made the national all-star team. He's a quality pitcher. Payoff pitch, well high, ball four. So Justin White draws a walk with one out. He's then, messed up all night, though, Tony. His fastball's been up when he's missed. His curveball's been up when he's missed. He's just not getting on top of the pitch, and he needs to get on top and bring it down in, in the strike zone. Joe Pickett will be the hitter, and I think that's what Dan Walbaum is going to walk out to the mound and talk to his pitcher about. Uh, you know, uh, there could be many things wrong here when you mess up high with a fastball. You're, you're not following through. You're, you don't open up enough. You're, your leg kick's not high enough. It, so many pitching mechanics go into the art of pitching that, you know, I'm sure Dan's probably spotted one or two out right now. He's trying to play go out there and just tell him to finish the pitch off. He's not finishing the pitch. He's leaving everything high, so he's got to finish it off. And you want to follow through, and you want your left hand, in his case, to come by his right knee, and he's just not finishing the pitch off doing that. Well, let's see if the words of wisdom from Dan Walbaum will do any good for his left-hander. There you see him right there on the hill, trying to compose himself. Yeah, I really think Blue Springs going to have a little trouble hitting him. If he just throws strikes, they're going to really be in this ball game here. So he just needs to get around the strikes on there and keep it there. Joe Pickett looks at strike one. Let's take you back to 77 again, Terry. <laughs> Uh, how thrilling was it to, to get that final out? Well, actually, we were the home team, so we uh, scored in the bottom of the, I believe it was the eighth inning on a squeeze bunt. So, uh, vivid memory, <laughs> very vivid memory of talking to the man at the plate, Denny Farner, and watching as soon as it went down, we knew it was over, and it was a very exciting moment. 
One ball, two strikes now. The count to Joe Pickett, the 375 hitting left fielder. Musser looks at White at first. Now comes to the plate. Good block by McIntyre. He'll keep it in front of him and the runner at bay at first. Tony, I think Terry, uh, in that situation in 77, you played four games, you're 4-0. Four Weren't three of the games extra innings, or is that right that you won three of the games in the extra innings? Yeah, the only game we didn't was the third game of the series. And uh, the first game against Waukegan, we went in extra innings. And we had told the kids all the first two weeks of the uh, preseason or pre-tournament that uh, if we got anybody into the fifth inning and we were tied, we were going to win it because we were in better condition just like all your teams. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pickett strikes out for out number two. That'll bring up James Lighthill. I'm anxious to hear the response on that. Oh, uh, there's no response. Terry and I coached together. We, we, we coached together in Hoosier North uh, in the past here a couple of years, and we, we coached together out in McCutcheon. So he, he did a great job for us. We really we really brought in the uh, bunting game when Terry came to our place. <laughs> Speaking of bunting, Lighthill tried to bunt his way on the first pitch, and he bunted through for strike one. Lighthill grounded the second in his last at bat. You know, speaking of bunting, this may be a good opportunity for the Hoosier North team to put some pressure on the defense of Blue Springs. The grass is getting a little damp. They need to make something happen. We're, we're waiting back, swinging from the heels. They're going to have to do something, create a run. The check swing will cost Lighthill a strike. He's down on the count, 0 and 2. So we got the well pitch coming up. Fastball just got a piece of it and went off his ankle. That does not feel good, folks. Well, that's a good pitch by Neil. It's down the way. I mean, down in in on him, and it's not a good pitch to hit. He needs to throw another one, maybe down the way or, or up and in or something. But he doesn't want to throw a pitching hit here. Two out. Justin White drew a walk. He has stayed there. The 0-2 swing. Adam Messon Musser retires his man on strikes with the fastball. Well, no runs, no hits, no errors. One was left. We have completed four innings of baseball. It's Blue Springs 1, Hoosier North nothing. This is the 1997 Colt World Series on Cox Communication Sports. We get a Meyer for just about everything. Hey, if anybody needs one-stop shopping and low prices, it's the Dilly family. Chocolate pudding. Detergent. Pots and pans. Aspirin. Tricycles. Way too many trikes. Mashed potatoes. Lens cleaner. Sneakers. Velcro. Meyer. Low prices on everything an instant family of eight needs. So, this is satellite TV. The future, yep. How much was it again? About eight fifty. Eight hundred and fifty dollars installed. Eight hundred and fifty. dollars Plus the monthly uh, uh, programming fee. Oh, just like cable. This is hundred and fifty channels. So, oh, where's our news? Can't get local news. Uh, no local stations. No local news. No local weather. These days, when everyone's promising you the future of television, sports. Isn't it nice to know you already have it? Along with Jake Burton, Tony Ross, our special guest, he should sound familiar to a lot of you folks, Terry Thompson, of course the coach of the 77 Colt League World uh, Champions, due up for Hoosier North. It'll be Keith Waller, Patrick Lowry, and Neil Musser. Hoosier North needs to get something going. They're down a run and time's starting to become a factor here. Time and to take a few pitches and uh, bingo, maybe bend a couple. Well, he's got him up in the box, too, you know. I think they're looking for a curveball, so they're moving up to, to, to try to take that away from him. But The count now 2-0 oh to Keith Waller. Good speed at the plate. I mean, he can beat one to ground. Get on for us. He grounded the third as last of bat. That fastball right there. So now the count, two balls and one strike. It's a good move on Walbaum's spot. Uh, position here to make him wait out the pitches, try to force this young man to throw some pitches. All have tried to bunt this, and this one winds up into the Astral dugout. Blue Springs, Missouri is where this team is from. They give themselves the names Astros. Two and two the count now to Waller. I know Musser struck out the last time, but boy, if Waller or Lowry can get on in front of him, I think he can get something going for him there and start to spark himself. Yes, sir. We'll see if that can happen, the 2-2. I don't think they have a weak hitter in this lineup. I'm surprised they're not doing more, but nervous. 
first game of the series for him. A lot Wall of young kids. Waller stays alive with that foul tip. He did well to hang in on that curveball. So the count evens still at two and two. Tony Germano still on the hill. The pitch. Curveball popped up to the right side. J.J. Thompson coming in hard. And him and his second baseman, David Desvota. I'm sorry, Brian Bergstad had trouble. So they got their signals crossed. That's the break they needed. Here we go. So James Lighthill and Brian Berkstead with some miscommunication allow a single. Actually, it'll be considered a double. Yeah, I think he gave him a base hit, so it's a double on that. I think that ball got in the lights on that outfielder. So you know, the second base is going back, calling it all the way, and I think the outfielder, and the outfielder in that situation, Tony, has got to take charge. He's in charge of the infield, and center fielder controls everybody, but the right fielder's over the second baseman, and he just let the second baseman keep on going, and he should have taken and called him off of it. Absolutely. Well, Patrick Lonnery will have a chance to move his runner over. And the first pitch is bunted right toward the mound. Germano fields it, throws the first, taking third on the play is Waller. So the sacrifice perfect. And there's one out, and the tying run 90 feet away for Hoosier North. Let's see how many opportunities they have to score from third with one out, Jake. I think there's 24, aren't there? I don't know. I can't name them all, but there's like 24. Plenty. A lot more than at second. Except for if he strikes out. <laughs> Maybe he'll strike out in this, yeah. this situation. It's going to get us a run. They're going to pull in about halfway here. I don't think they can cut off the run halfway, though. Got good speed on third. Counterpart against counterpart here. Musser against Germano, and Musser looks at a fastball low. Good move on Walbum's coaching here again to make the kids take. It's paying off. I take till you get a strike with this situation. Here's the 1 0 to Neal. Rip go, toward go, the go. right side. Oh, and it's the bad hops. Brian Burkstadt, who's your north, will get their first run of the ball game. That'll be an RBI hit for Neil Musser as he helps his own cause. I think that's what they needed right there. I think we can manufacture some more runs, and I don't know if Blue Springs can hit Mr. Musser. Well, I'll tell you what, this, you know, from a confidence standpoint, a little play like that, that could really mean the world to Musser, especially when he goes on the mound again. The hitter now, Jason Trida. And the first pitch to him is low ball one. Well, more important than that, maybe, Tony, is the fact that it's going to give some benefit or some uh, boost to the whole team because they've been sitting back here letting Neil do everything out there, and finally they got to run. Now they got a little bit of excitement in the dugout. Have a little fun now. That fastball off the corner. Two balls and no strikes, the count. This is number nine hitter. Jason's batting the nine spot. They're going to get with Hensel here. Boy, you want to take here maybe and make this pitcher throw some strikes here. Here's the 2-0. Fastball a little low and away. He's probably thrown more pitches this inning than he's thrown the last two. Well, he only threw uh, five in the third, and he only threw 11 in the fourth. He's already at 13 this inning. Try to stands in. He awaits the 3-0. Inside and upstairs, ball four. So now who's your north? Still knocking on the door. The go-ahead run is now at second base. Some insurance stands at first. So there's one away. This game has just been tied up by Hoosier North. They're threatening again. And it's now up to Matt Henzel. Henzel has struck out. And he has flied out to center field. Germano from the stretch delivers. A fastball right down the middle for strike one. There, Henzel taking. He's taking because he's had a little trouble. You know, he just threw four straight balls to the last batter, and he's going to take until he gets a strike. Now he's in a position where he's got to really get up there and be aggressive with the bat. Here's the 0-1 by Germano. Pulled to first. Big play by Middleton. He throws the second for the No! The ball was mishandled by John Mason, the shortstop. Well, that's a tough play, Tony. Jason Milton throws that ball to, to, to Mason at, at second there, but that ball's to his left. If he just goes to first base and touches the bat, he's gotten out. He tries to get two there, which I don't think he's going to be able to do anyway with Hensel running from the left side. Now they got bases loaded. Got a great opportunity here for Gasper. If we can get a high ball hanging on Gasper like we did that first thing, we got three runs this inning here. Yep. Well, the Astros head coach 
is coming out, and he's going to have a talk with his player. Germano's doing a good job out there on the mound. It's just the defense is letting him down. They need to stay with the young man. It looks like that's what they're going to do. Just settle him down. Fred Broker, the manager, went out to have a chat with Germano. Now you got the bases low here. I know he just threw a strike. We hit it, but I'm going to take another pitch here to make this pitcher sure. go, squeeze a little bit on him here. Make him work. You got to make him work. It's been successful so far in this inning. Get him while he's down. The hitter now, David Gasvoda. Gasvoda stands in. The first pitch to him is a breaking ball outside for ball one. Gasvoda is doubled and he is grounded out to third. He's ahead of the count here, one and zero. Oh, as Germano is ready to throw, with the bases loaded for Hoosier North with one out. Ripped it short, and it's by nice for a base hit. One run scores. Here comes China. He will score the throw to the plate. Not in time. And now they got the runner in between first and second. Hung up. Gasvoda is going to get back to the bag in time because the first baseman was playing the role of cutoff, so no one was actually covering the bag after all. It's a two run single for David Gasvoda. And Hoosier North jumps out to a three to one lead. Big hit. That's his second hit of the game here. He hit the high. High fat or high curveball last time. He drove a fastball that time, and he's a nice hitter. He's, he's done a nice job. He's played with the Bulls also all summer long, and I think it's helped his hitting a lot. Here's one that we got to get back on track. Chris Berry, he is grounded out and struck out. Again, the success of this inning, though, I think is based on Coach Walbaum's philosophy to make him wait it out. Line shot to left field. Oh, misplayed by Justin White, the Blue Springs left fielder. A run will score. And now Hoosier North is up there, adding a 4-1. to one. It looked like Justin might have lost that one in the lights, gentlemen. Well, that ball is sinking. You know, if you play, it might be a situation where, you know, he's played out there and he hasn't played. Maybe a center fielder's not used to that ball, but that ball's going to take the line. He just didn't play it right. It's going to be an error on Justin White and another run for Hoosier North. That left-hander's ball slicing away from him. It looks like he just looks like he turned his glove the wrong way. That'll bring up Nick McIntyre as time called. Well, I like Nick up in this situation here, boy, just to pound it a little bit more, gets another run across. He, he's a line drive here. He'll hit the gaps with the ball. He got a little power here and there. He may drop it on you. He'll do a lot of different things with the bat. First pitch to him is a curve low and away. He's a 477 hitter when he was playing uh, Lafayette American Legion ball. So and They're playing the state finals this weekend here. Nick's playing in this also. He's going to go back and forth to Evansville, <laughs> to Evansville Lafayette this weekend. That's a ball player, folks. Here's the 1-1 delivery. Instead, Germano steps off the rubber. Runners on first and second for Hoosier North. They put up four runs on four hits. A couple of errors on the Astros' part have helped. Here's the 1-0, and that breaking ball over for a strike. Here's a little disadvantage with the Blue Springs team because, you know, they don't have their other pitchers are out here playing in the field. They don't have time to warm them up. This kid's in a little trouble. If they bring him in, he only gets eight pitches, and and uh, they're wanting to, this guy to get out of the, out of the inning. But... The 1-1. One, one. He's not going to do it, maybe. Grounded to second. Borkstad bobbles, throws the first in time. They'll record the out there. So a two-way, Hoosier North now has runners on first and second. As McIntyre trots back to the dugout. It's time for this young man to play to suck it up and hit a line drive. J.J. gets us a base hit here. It gives us a 6-1 lead. Boy, that's monumental in this game. So J.J.'s the ninth hitter in this inning for Hoosier North. Line drive hitter here, Tony. If he gets us one of those, boy, we're going to have two more runs. He's grounded out twice, and the pitch to him. Look out! He almost took out his coach at first base. That's what he can do right there. He turned on that one and went with it, boy. If it's just a little bit more out on the plate, he'd get the base hit the right field. Towards. Terry, how'd you like that swing? That's a little better. <laughs> That's what I want to see. I want to see that line drive. It's got to go down that back leg, like I said before. He's a line drive hitter. He, this is his type of pitcher. The 0-1, curveball, oh. slow roller to the right side. This could be trouble unless Germano gets there, in which he does, and he'll retire 
J.J. Thompson to end the inning. But who's your North? Four runs, four hits, a couple of errors by Blue Springs help the cause. And the Hoosier North All-Stars have taken a three-run lead as we go into the bottom of the fifth. It's four to one, Hoosier North. That's the Colt World Series on Cox Communications. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like Cox Cable Service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice. And Cox Communications offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or a $20 credit, guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free, guaranteed. Cox Communications, quality you can count on. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like Cox Cable Service. Picture a world where the music perfectly fits the way you feel with the flawless sound of a great CD and no commercial ever. You can live in that world now. It's called your home. You can create that music. It's called Music Choice, the definitive music service. Over 30 different channels direct to your stereo. So changing your mood is as easy as changing channels. Music Choice, the next great sound wave. Got my chips cashed in. Keep trucking. 2894 4614. Welcome back to Loeb Stadium in Lafayette, Indiana. There you see the numbers. 4 to 1, Hoosier North on top of Blue Springs. And again, a pleasure to uh, bring with us again Terry Thompson of the 77 championship team. And uh, Terry, I tell you what, you got to like what's happened so far. Things have kind of turned around for the good guys. Well, definitely. I think they got patient uh, up at the plate, made some things happen. I think they're a solid ball club. From what I've seen of the few games I've seen here, I think they've got a chance. All right, we're ready to go for the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be the right, or excuse me, the shortstop, John Mason. And the first pitch to him is fouled away to the right side. I'm, I'm a little surprised, Tony. We don't see anyone down the bullpen warming up for Blue Springs. I mean, uh, Tony uh, Germani has threw 23 pitches last inning. He had a couple short innings. But boy, he's throwing a lot of pitches and had a little trouble last inning. Line drive, base hit down the left field line. This could be trouble. Mason's on his way to second as having a little bit of trouble as left fielder Keith Waller, but he was able to get it in and fortunately keep Mason to a single, a very long single. Good job by Waller, even though he kind of struggled there. I think the uh, first base coach was holding him up all the way. I don't know, maybe he's injured. Not really sure, but he wasn't having him turn on at all. I thought that was a for sure two-bagger right there. Should have been. Anytime it goes to 322 sign, you, you need to get to second base almost standing up. But he may not be able to run well. Terry probably hit that on the head. Kevin Clark's going to come in, and he's going to be pinch hitting. Kevin Clark, his numbers this season, a 300 hitter with no home runs and two RBIs, and the first pitch offered by Musser is into the dirt for ball one. You know, Neil threw full game Saturday. Coming here on three days rest, he looks like he's getting a little tired. That could be the 1-0. Didn't look tired with that it fastball. Sure didn't. The dust popped Boy, on the next <laughs> mitt there, didn't it? <laughs> one and one the count. I hope I'm totally wrong because he's, he's an excellent player. One ball, one strike the count. You want a kid like this completing the game after he comes off that national uh, championship game. So now it's a ball and two strikes. There's the throw to Good first. Snap. And down on strikes goes Walker. I think Jake's got a future catcher there behind the plate. <laughs> yes, he does. Got to be pretty proud about that. Oh, he's a good athlete. He's a good baseball player. He lives and dies baseball. You know, uh, he could probably play any position on the field. He pitches even, so, I mean, he could probably Can't play go well. any position. <laughs> That'll bring up Tony Germano as a throw to first. He's able to draw Manson, or Mason back. And the first pitch to Germano misses. Oh, and one to count. Another throw to first. Obviously, Mason's got the eye of Musser here. Neil's done a good job keeping him close the whole game. Germano butts. The only play is going to be the first. Pulls the first baseman. Barry off the bag, but Barry did a good job of recover and 
get to the bag before the runner. Two out now. Anytime you drag bunt, Tony, you want to be able to make sure that the third baseman's going to field it or it's going to be foul. That way you got another strike to hit the ball. And both times he's bunted, it's been back to muster. The first time Neil fumbled around, and this time Neil fielded it. That'll bring up Brian Borgstad, and he looks at a fastball in and over for a strike. I want to know if you still use the hose to uh, teach that. <laughs> uh, I was told you do. We use a few things out there for it. <laughs> Two out, Borgstad the hitter. He stands in for the right side. <laughs> we bunt every day in practice. <laughs> <laughs> folks, you think we're joking? Swing and a miss at the curveball. <laughs> if you think we're joking, folks, uh-uh. Now, you were guys were talking about the Mooser McIntyre battery. That kind of takes you back to a couple of all, uh, big names. Uh, Josh Coons, who's now playing for Stanford, who played in the Colt World Series, and uh, Josh Loggins, who now plays for Kentucky. There's a shot up the middle. Getting there is try to the throw. Not in time. Pulled him off the bag. Yeah. It kind of looked like Barry was pulled off the bag, but wow, what a bang bang play that was. That was a great, great play by Jason Trey. Had a lot of range, got to the ball, had to turn the inside and make the throw. Just barely missed him. Still two out. Now the Astros have runners on the corners. This is where this all star needs to step up and get a strikeout. Brian Thompson's going to have other ideas about that. He has walked and he's flied out. All right now we've got a little delay. You're not quite sure what for, but. <laughs> We're ready to go. We just got the okay through the PA. So Thompson stands in. He awaits Musser's first pitch. A good fastball snap throw to first. Not, not the time. Nick sure does like to throw behind the runners, boy. He, he likes to show that arm a little bit. He's, He's got a so gun. Quick. He's got a gun. You've always done that. <laughs> first pitch to Thompson. Just upstairs. Help me out, one. guys. It looked like he's slowing down a little bit. Well, well, last time he said it, he popped the next one, so let's hope he comes let's, in. Yeah, let's hope. Oh. Here's the 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. So now it's a couple of balls and a strike to Thompson. Still two outs. The Astros have done a majority of their damage with two out, at least in this inning. This is a big batter, guys. 2-1. Curve ball pulled to short. Triad's got it. Instead of going to short way, he'll go to first in time, and that'll end the inning. It's a good curveball. He's throwing in four fastballs. That's a good curveball. So Musser gets himself out of a potential jam. Lou Springs leaves two. They left two on base, and they picked up a hit to boot. At Cox, we know your time is valuable, so we introduced our on-time guarantees. Kevin, Kevin, yeah. For living, how this call, you get $20. Uh-oh. You're on time. Yes, ma'am. The on-time guarantee from Cox. If I'd been late, ma'am, we'd have owed you $20. You don't say. Cox, quality service you can count on. CXTV, your channel reflecting greater Lafayette. Stadium, everyone, along with Jay Burton, Tony Ross. There you see the numbers. Four runs, four hits, three errors for Hoosier North. One run, three hits, three errors for Blue Springs. We have a couple of defensive changes to talk about. We'll tell you about them in a moment. Leading off and uh, getting up a set is Keith Waller. So that's the second hit for Waller tonight. And that'll bring up now Patrick Lowry. He got the big inning going last time with the double that fell in the right field there, Tony. So hopefully this is some more. We're going to get some more runs this inning here. Patrick Lowry has no official bat yet. They get throw to first, runner back. Lowry has been hit by a pitch, and he has sacrificed much. First pitch to Lowry is into the dirt. And the runner's going to be off. The throw down, not in time. 
Some good heads up base running there, displayed by Waller. Hey, if you got the speed, use it. In the same situation we were last thing here, it worked last time. Danny's probably gonna give him a signal to bunt here. Patrick puts it down, we bring him on over third and got Musher up again to bring him home. Lowry has a one ball and no strike count to him. As he stands in and waits. The breaking ball outside. Well, he wasn't bunting that time, so. So it's 2-0. He might be taking this time, that's what he might be doing. Here's the 2-0 offering by Germano. Off the end of the bat and drops for a base hit. They're going to wave her up. Ball bomb's going to keep Waller at third. Ball bomb had the arm waving for a second. But center fielder, Joe Pickett, got there in a hurry. And he prevented another run coming in. So nobody out. Back-to-back -back hits by Hoosier North. And they're threatening to score again. Neil Musser stands in. Musser. He's pitched himself a pretty good ball game. He's finally settled down, and I don't even think he's really pitching with his best stuff either. No, he's predominantly throwing fastballs. He doesn't have his change up and his breaking pitch working really well for him right now, but he's staying ahead and getting ahead in the count and doing a good job with his fastball. Looks at ball one from his counterpart, Germano. Musser has struck out and picked up an RBI single in his last at bat. And that came in the fifth inning. Here's the pitch, swung on, driven in the straightaway center field. Joe Pickett right there makes the catch. Waller tags from third. We got a play at the plate. This is going to be close. The throw! They're going to get him. And they're going to snap throw to second. And they get a double play. That's a triple play. A triple play has been made. Joe Pickett made the catch in center field. Then he threw out Waller at home plate. Then Tanner threw out the runner trying to take second. So a triple play just like that ends the inning for Hoosier North. Wow, amazing. We have completed five and a half innings of baseball here at Loeb Stadium. Hoosier North still on top, four to one. It's the Colton World Series on Cox. sale prices on top of their everyday low prices. The produce is always fresh. Getting a battery charger for uh, motorcycles. Just bought a toaster for my daughter. Tennis shoes. Hammers, nails. You can find just about anything in here. I love your sales. You can't beat it. Buy a low prices, low prices, on top of low prices, every day. Tell them it's 150 channels. That's good. That's good. Tell them it's only $850 installed. $850. That's good. That's good. Tell them they buy it, they own it. They own it. That's good. That's good. Then in two years, if it's obsolete, they'll buy another. Buy another. That's good. That's business. Yes, ma'am. Interested in a satellite dish? These days, when everyone's promising you the future of television. $850, buy it, own it, obsolete in two years, buy another. That's good. Well, that's good. Isn't it nice to know you already have it? There you see the numbers. Four runs, six hits, three errors for Hoosier North. One run, three hits, and three errors for Blue Springs, Missouri. Wow, what a play we just got done seeing. A triple play at that. Started by Joe Pickett with the catch. Tanner made the tag for out number two. And Tanner threw out the runner trying to take second for out number three. It'll be Tanner who leads it off. And he has an 0-1 count to him. Then he whiffs at a high fastball. Now it's 0-2. That's important. Neil comes back. The momentum's in carrying Blue Springs way. Neil comes back, gets the first two pitches in, and gets this guy here. He may change the momentum. That fastball, a little outside. The count now 1-2. and two. Blue Springs has to be a little excited if they realize they had a triple play there. I don't know if they realize that. Shot in the right field base hit. Tanner with a nice stroke. I'll tell you what, J.J. Thompson came up firing. It looked like Tanner was kind of lollygagging his way to first, just taking for granted he had a single. He's lollygagging, and Nick McIntyre's not running down in the back up thinking that J.J.'s not going to throw it there. He's got to move on down the line also in case that throw goes over his head. They're going to be on second base if we don't have a backup. 
Justin White has struck out and he has walked tonight. He faces the lefty here and he fouls off the first pitch to the screen. Neil Musser so far has gone through the full five innings. He's allowed four hits and one run. There's a curved ball over for a strike. Now the count quickly 0-2. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastball outside. That's a good place for an 0-2 pitch there. Make him chase a little bit. Don't give him a good pitch to hit. Neil's a smart pitcher. He's <laughs> throwing a lot, of, a lot of innings. David Beek warming up in the Hoosier North bullpen as the fastball misses. Still two and no, two the count. Still nobody warming up Tony for Blue Springs. You know, they look like they're going to go with Germani again next inning. Deuce even pitch. And White looked horrible with that swing and a miss for strike three. It was a great pitch, great location. Ten strikeouts on the evening now for Neil Musser. And again, I have to reiterate, he doesn't look like he has his good stuff. He's got a good fastball. He's got a fastball here. We're still in the 16. It's moving a little bit, but his other pitches aren't as good as they've been. It's quickly 0-1 to Joe Pickett. And he's getting ahead of every, every batter here. Stay with the fastball of this kid because he has struck out twice and all on fastballs. It's the curveball low for ball one. Good breaking ball. Oh, it skips by McIntyre behind him, and the runner's going to take second on the play. That'll be a pass ball. Nick nonchalant of that. You know, he's just a little bit trying to be a little lazy back here, not moving and getting in front of the ball here and getting after here. So Brad Tanner stands at second with one out and a 2-1 count in the meantime to Joe Pickett. Nick's shaking his head back here. I know he's not real happy with himself on that. He'll be the first to tell you he's not. Fastball fouled back. Joe Pickett still looks like he's late with that fastball. As I'm going to throw another fastball, Tony. Yep. He hasn't touched a fastball all night. 2-2. Two -two. Fastball high and away. I don't know if we can get a shot of it, but uh, they got a organ behind home plate in the upper tier. The payoff pitch. Inside corner struck him out. Two gone. 11th strikeout now for Neil Musser. Went with a fastball. Went with a fastball, and that's what he's got picked out all, all night on. James Lighthill. It's grounded to second. He struck out. First pitch to him with two outs is a fastball high. Ball one. Tanner still standing at second. Only reason why he's there, thanks in part to a pass ball, a pickoff move, but no one was covering for Hoosier North, and Tanner just held on to the ball. Neil's done a nice job the whole evening keeping runners close. Different pickoff moves, different looks. Curveball into the dirt. Great block by McIntyre. So it's two balls and no strikes. Two out the pitch. Fastball right there. Snap throw to second. Tanner had to get back. McIntyre threw that all the way to second from his knees, coach. <laughs> he's got a good arm. He's quick and he stays down there. A little deceiving for the runner, too. Usually those guys stand up and throw it. 2 1 offering. Yes, missing inside. So now it's three balls. And one strike to Lighthill. He fouls off the 3 2 pitch. So the runner, Tanner, will chop back to second. There's strike three call. He got the pitch by him. That ends the inning. Once again, Blue Springs strands another runner with no hits and no errors. Nobody left on. We go into the seventh inning. Who's your north? Four, Blue Springs one. We're back with more of the Colt World Series on Cox in just a moment. Imagine a world where the music perfectly fits the way you feel. 
with the flawless sound of a great CD, music of your choice, and no commercials, ever. You can live in that world now. It's called your home. You can create that music. It's called Music Choice, the definitive music service direct to your stereo. Let over 30 different channels of music wash all over you. Music Choice, the next great sound wave. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like Cox Cable Service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice. And Cox Communications offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or a $20 credit, guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free, guaranteed. Cox Communications, quality you can count on. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like Cox Cable Service. Welcome back to Loeb Stadium in Lafayette, Indiana. Along with Jake Burton, Tony Ross, and our statistician, Sean Walkup, helping us out. Appreciate all of his help. As we get ready for the seventh inning, the Hoosier North All-Stars clinging onto a 4-1 to one lead, and it's amazing. The Astros are still sticking with Tony Germano on the hill. They've gone with him the whole game here. I mean, he's, he struggled there in the fifth, and he struggled a little bit in the last thing, but uh, got out with that triple play. Um, I think they're going to try to finish with him. All right, it'll be interesting to see what happens as we are ready for the seventh inning. It'll be Trito, followed by the top of the order, Henzel and Gazboda. And the first pitch to Trito is a breaking ball over for a strike. Trito tonight has flied out, and he has walked. So he's technically 0 for 1. As the 0-1 pitch is a curveball over for strike two. Another curveball stroked in the right, but right there playing him perfect was the right fielder Kevin Clark for out number one. Contrast in pitching styles here. Messer, dominant fastball pitcher. Uh, Germani, more off-speed stuff. Three curve balls here in the seventh inning. I'll bet Master comes back with three fastballs in the seventh inning. <laughs> That's almost guaranteed. Matt Hedzel steps in. He tried to bunt his way on. Did he pull the bat back? No. It's going to be called strike one on the bunt through. Hedzel has struck out. He has flied out and reached on an air. That pitch misses. The count evens had a ball and a strike. Here we go. The 1-1. One, one. And that breaking ball didn't break too much. Stayed high and away. Two balls. One strike the count. Dan Walbaum, the head coach of the Hoosier North All-Stars, yelling some encouragement to his hitter, who now has a three ball and one strike count to his benefit. Just like a 2-0 pitch here, Tony, you want to be ready to drive a ball. Henzel looks at ball through ball four. So Henzel draws himself a walk. That brings up David Gaswoda. He is doubled. He has grounded out and he is single. Picked up an RBI on his single in the fifth inning. Picked up two RBIs, excuse me, with that single in the fifth. And a throw to first draws Henzel back. Gasvota stands in. Here's the pitch. Fastball ripped right to short. And through for a base hit. So Gasvota with a single up the middle. And now Hoosier North have runners on first and second with one out. David hit that ball the same place he hit the last pitch. You know, last time he got the hit up the middle of bringing two runs in. Right to the left of shortstop, just out of his reach. Both hard hit balls. Chris Baird. He has grounded out, struck out, and he has reached on an air as well. He hit that fly ball to Justin White and left, who lost it in the lights and dropped it. And he's going to pop this one up on the right side. Who's calling for it? Looks like Lighthill's got it. Oh, and he dropped the ball, but they're going to say he had the ball long enough to Inter constitute the out. And he didn't fly. fly rule. Yeah. 
So now there are two gone, with runners still at first and second for Hoosier North. Tell you what, it sure would be nice to pick up these next these uh, two runs they got on base. And Nick's due. He hasn't got a base hit yet. You know, he's hitting 477 for Legion, so I think we're ready for a base hit from he's, him here. He's grounded to the second twice, and this time, well, he won't get the hit, but he did get hit. <laughs> so he'll get the pass the first the hard way. So as McIntyre is hit by the pitch, the bases are now loaded for the Hoosier North All-Stars with two out. And J.J. Thompson will have a chance to open up this lead. It's 4-1 to one right now, Hoosier North. J.J.'s topped the ball three times back to the first baseman. They've had three unassisted plays with the first baseman to make it out here. So I know he's looking for a base hit here, too. Looking for a pitch he can drive. And the pitch to J.J. queued off the end of the bat foul toward his dugout. Matt Waller, who's the hitter on deck, went and grabbed it. J.J., 0-1 count. He's pulled the ball twice to Jason Middleton. Make that three times to Middleton. Here's the 0-1, and here's another little tapper to the right side. And the pitcher's going to cut it off and take it himself as Germano took charge, and he'll make the third out. Hoosier North leaves the bases loaded in their half of the seventh. We have completed six and a half. All Hoosier North has got to do is just hold them for three outs. They lead it four to one. It's the Colt World Series on Cox Communication Sports. We're just talking to some people today, trying to get their reaction to this Meyer score. Every day, every day, Meyer does it like he knows. The store itself is terrific. Are they filming me right now? There's a great selection of everything. Where do you think you're going? No, 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 no. You got to talk to me. There's a lot of things you can get here you can't get anywhere else. We're just trying to get me alone. Anytime you save money, I enjoy that. Isn't that what you want me to say? Can't myself. Maya doesn't like nobody else. At Cox, we know your time is valuable, so we introduced our on-time guarantee. Either we're on time or your cable installation's on us. And if we're late on a service call, you get $20. Uh-oh. You're on time. Yes, ma'am. The on-time guarantee from Cox. If I'd been late, ma'am, we'd have owed you $20. You don't say. Cox, quality service you can count on. Hmm. Well, here's a Cox programming reminder. You can follow the Colt World Series baseball action on CXTV 13 Sports on your tape delay telecast. Tonight's game will be shown the following afternoon, which would be this afternoon at 1.30 as you are watching. So catch exciting Colt World Series baseball right here on Cox Communications. Well, we jump into the bottom of the seventh inning. All we got to do is hold them if you're Hoosier North. 4-7-3 for North, 1-4-3 for Blue Springs. Musser's gone the distance, Coach. He's gone the distance on 105 pitches through six innings here. He's a strong kid. He's thrown a lot of innings all summer long, so I, I think he can finish this game strong for us. John Mason has struck out. He's also collected a single off Musser, and the first pitch is outside for ball one. Second pitch fouled off to the right side, and that is out of play. I'm a little surprised that uh, Blue Springs isn't taking a little here in the seventh inning. You know, try to get ahead in the count here and work Musser a little bit, but that pitch was up a little bit. I thought it was a ball. The 1-1 one -one by Musser. That one's low and away and into the dirt. Pass McIntyre. Oh, well, check swing's going to cost him a strike, though, so the count now a ball and two strikes. The home plate umpire said, you did go around, John. The one two to Mason, curve into the dirt. Good job of Mason laying off of it. Count evens two and two. There's the inexperience of Nick catching. You know, he's got to be blocking that pitch, not catching. He blocks it, keeps it in the front, picks it up, throws the guy out for strike three, misses that. The guy goes to first, he's on with strike three. So he's got to become a blocker in this situation on a curveball in the dirt. Good point. Mason standing in with a two ball, two strike count. Nobody out. Bottom of the seventh. Who's your north? All they need is three outs. Here's the pitch. He went around for strike three. That's 12 strikeouts. <coughs> Make that 13 strikeouts on the evening for Musser. About 33, right fielder, 
and coach and everybody else listening and watching this one. I'm not very good with mathematics, as you can tell. <laughs> the first pitch to Walker misses high for ball one. The second pitch swung through and missed. He still got some velocity on that fastball after throwing 110 pitches tonight. Just shows you how strong he is. The 1-1 one -one swung through. Now the count one ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. And Blue Springs, Missouri is down to their final out. That's five strikeouts in a row, Tony. In the sixth and seventh innings here. Boy, Muster is just throwing some hum baby up there. Predominantly on fastballs. He's not going to waste any time here. So two out, and it's up now to Tony Germano, the pitcher. He fouls off the first pitch. He's down to his final two strikes. Well, I say we pray off to a pretty good beginning, Coach. Both teams advance to the next level or next round, having a 1-0 record. Things Cur looking in our favor. Curve ball misses. One ball, one strike now to Germano. That's grounded to second, and this should be the ball game. Guess what? Oh, okay. Let's, Chris Berry just cannot hang on to that ball. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> Folks, I think I'm probably just as surprised, if not the most surprised person here. I thought that was going to be routine, but Chris Berry just apparently lost the ball. Might have been in the lights. I think all three of our outfielders are as surprised as you are, Tony, because they're already in the dirt, infield dirt, ready to celebrate, I think. So that'll be an error. I think you got to give it on Barry, the first baseman. Ball's catchable. I'd say it's E1 or E3. Borgstad will have to keep it alive as the curveball misses for ball one. Boy, I sure hope I didn't put the cart before the horse. I'm mentioning about one out away. The 1 0 pitch. <laughs> right on the inside corner with a fastball. One ball, one strike. This is the only batter, I think, in the order he hasn't struck out. Maybe there's a couple of them, but he's one of the few. That fastball to Gazvoda. Can he get there? No, it's off his glove in the right field. Thompson charging hard will keep Germano at second. So that'll be a single, and the inning stays alive as now the tying run comes to the plate in Brian Thompson. Thompson has walked, he has flied out, and he has grounded out. From up here, Muster's fastball looks like it's still got some velocity on it, but you kind of wonder if you're a hitter, you're seeing maybe just a little bit of speed taken out. Yeah, Boston. they're at least hitting it to right field instead of missing it here. So they're late still, but, but they are getting the bat on it now. Brian Thompson looks at ball one. He's the tying run at the plate. Those two runners on first and second mean nothing. What a great block by Nick McIntyre. He saved the runners from advancing 90 feet. Just looking to throw strikes here. Behind the count here, Neil just needs to sell down here and get after this guy. The 2-0 inside and look out. Three balls, no strikes now. And it's gotten quiet here at Loeb Stadium. Here's the 3-0 offering by Musser. Into the dirt, ball four, and now the bases are loaded for the Astros. Probably time to talk to him a little bit here and sell him down. You know, he just needs to calm down here. He's dominated the game throughout the order. Bases loaded. It doesn't mean anything if he gets this next out because he's got two outs in the, in the book. Brad Tanner, though, is going to be the man Muster's going to have to face. And Brad Tanner, folks, just happens to be the 485 hitter, team leader in average. He has 78 RBIs in his... 66 games. However, he has flied out, struck out, and had a weak single to right field. Warming up in the Hoosier North bullpen. Once again, it looks like that's Beak. And Dan Walbaum's out to have a chat with his left-hander, Neil Musser here. He's probably saying just throw it across. These two runs that are on second and third just don't mean nothing. No, I'm sure he's wanting to get ahead in the count here. You know, Neil's dominated the game because he's gotten ahead in the count and used his fastball to his advantage and snuck in a curveball here and there. And I think he just needs to sell down here and get the ball across the plate and make this guy hit it up. I well, said this before that, you know, guy, if he's a 300 or 400 hitter, there's six times he's not going to get a hit. So just bring it across the plate. There you saw Beat momentarily. 
in the bullpen. Tanner is going to look at a fastball for a strike. That's a big pitch. That's an important pitch. There. Yep. The 0-1. End of the dirt. Another great block by McIntyre. He saved a run there. Just throw strikes, Neil. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Popped up right side. Will this stay in play? It looks like it's heading foul, and it will be out of play. So the count, one ball, two strikes, two out. Base is loaded for the Astros. Big pitch. One ball, two strikes, two out. Base is loaded. 4-1 Hoosier North. The pitch to Tanner, jammed him, fly ball, shallow right field, the second baseman gets photo, goes out, makes the catch, and Hoosier North wins their first game of the Colt World Series. Great job by Musser to get himself out of that jam, coach. He sailed down that inning, or that, that, that batter, and threw his pitches, got ahead in the count, worked the curve on there, snuck it in a little bit to make the guy think what's coming, and did a nice job of jamming him on that last pitch. Your final score, four runs, seven hits, and four errors for Hoosier North. One run, five hits, and three errors for Blue Springs. There you see the tail of the tape. And your final score from Loeb Stadium, Hoosier North wins their first over Blue Springs, Missouri, by a final tally of 4-1. to one. Stay tuned. we got a postgame show coming up in just a moment. This is the 1997 Colt World Series on Cox Communication Sports. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like Cox Cable Service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice. And Cox Communications offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or a $20 credit, guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free, guaranteed. Cox Communications, quality you can count on. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like Cox Cable Service. For about $850, you can get a satellite dish installed in your house, which will bring all of your TVs 150 channels. Of course, unless you spend substantially more, all these channels will be controlled by the main set in the house, which may not necessarily be yours. These days, when everyone's promising you the future of television, isn't it nice to know you already have it? Welcome back to Loeb Stadium, everyone. Again, the final score, 4-7-4 four, and four for Hoosier North, 5-1-3 and three for Blue Springs. Both teams left nine runners stranded. I'm standing now with the winning coach, Dan Walbaum. And, Dan, congratulations on your first win. Thanks. It's, uh, you know, the first one's the hardest one sometimes. And, uh, you know, we weren't real sharp. Uh, Neil has a way of bailing teams out when, when they're not real sharp. Uh, you know, we have our work cut out for us because with four errors and, and, what, a couple drop third strikes, that sort of thing, left some runners on base. Uh, Pretty impatient at the plate, but we won. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all good, though, right? Yeah. Neil had also 14 strikeouts in that game. Is uh, unbelievable fastball. Uh, this this guy is truly you guys' ace, isn't he? He sure is. And and you know, it was a situation the first couple innings, he just had to throw the fastball. Uh, you know, he was he was mad because his curveball wasn't going across the way he wanted it. Uh, but he just he had to throw the fastball. He didn't need his curveball, especially right at the start. Where did you feel that this game kind of turned around for you guys? The inning before the four-run inning, uh, because we settled in and we were a little bit more patient, and and you know we jumped on the first pitch a lot, which you know to some extent you, you want your guys to be aggressive, but at the same time if they're going to be aggressive, they have to get a pitch they can drive, and we didn't always do that. Uh, but the inning before the four-run inning, what was that? The fourth, I guess. Then, right. uh, you know, we were we were much more patient, so that was good to see. <laughs> If there is anything that kind of caught your eye that you want to work on uh, within the next couple of days before your next game, what do you think it's going to have to be? We just need to get our cuts in, you know, and, and situation the kids are, uh, they're excited to be here and all that. But uh, while we're at practice, need to get our cuts in. And, and uh, I think the long wait, you know, on the first night kind of got to us a little bit tonight, too. 
Also, how confident do you feel about having this pitching staff as such? I mean, you, like you said, out of the 15 that's on your roster, you got 10 that are well-established pitchers that you can just throw out there at any point in time. Yeah, we only use one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, you know, we feel good about uh, anyone we put out there. And, uh, you know, between David Beak and Adam Townsend Friday and Sunday, we feel like we're in good hands. Yeah, Coach, best of luck and congratulations Thanks, on your first Tony. win. Appreciate it. All right, there he is, Dan Walbaum, the head coach of Hoosier North, whose team was victorious again by a final tally of 4-1. to one. And Jake Burton now uh, rejoins us here. Jake, great performance by Neil Musser. Well, Neil was on top of his game as far as a fastball, but he didn't have anything else go with it. But it just shows, you know, I mean, he just dominated the game, threw the ball by him. We're still throwing it by him in the sixth and seventh inning. He struck out five out of the last six outs uh, after that triple play. So that's important for him to come back, and I just thought he threw really well. Him and David Gasfoda's is hitting were, were big keys tonight. Both teams left nine runners on base tonight. Um, was that kind of uncharacteristic or considering it was both teams first game it, not really too much to worry about? Well, I don't think so. You know, I, I think there's a couple times where the pitchers both got in a little bit of jams there and, and got out of a couple of them with bases loaded. And then a couple of times where, the, you know, the hits finally run out. You know, I mean, you get so many hits there and, and pretty soon they make a play and, and you leave a couple guys on. But it's good to leave some guys on if you're scoring runs. And if you're not scoring runs and leaving guys on, that's a different story. But we're scoring runs there. You know, we got four runs there and, and left some guys on. But I think that's important, you know. Coach uh, Walbaum thought that the fourth inning was probably the most key inning in this contest. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, I heard what he had to say there, and I think he's right. You know, the kids were really nervous. Jerry Terry Thompson said it best. You know that they're just a little, you know, a little nervous out there. You know, and playing playing a little tight. But but I thought they loosened up. You know, and definitely when you get a run here and there, and of course, you know, Neil gets the first run in with his base hit there. You know, and so that that got things going. And from then on, it was just Musher's ball game to win on the mound. Well, tomorrow night we'll get our uh, second look at the Lafayette All-Star squad. Uh, Brian McDonald's squad got to be feeling pretty happy about winning their first one. Oh, yeah, I know Brian's happy. You know, Brian and Danny both, you know, for both Lafayette area teams here to win the first games here and move on to the next round and being ahead 1-0. It's a lot better than being 0-1 going in that second game. All right, again, the final score, the Hoosier North All-Stars come away with a 4-1 win over Blue Springs, Missouri squad. For Jake Burton, I'm Tony Ross. We'll see you again right here for CXTV 13's coverage of the Lafayette Colt World Series. Until tomorrow night, so long, everyone.